It's all about shifting priorities, you know? So like if I have an exam coming up, I'm not gonna be working on that Anki project that's like exciting for the moment. I'm gonna have to, you know, buckle down on some of my practice questions and focus on that. And so it's really about shifting that attention, but being able to shift it quickly. And I think one of the things in med school that uh, you can't always like take a break between each of those activities. Sometimes you finish one thing and you take five, 10 minutes and you have to get right back to it and just like move on. And so it's that constant shifting of priorities, realizing that you do have more stamina than you think and um, just, you know, keep moving. Finding balance in medical school life is difficult. But the first step in finding balance is knowing that balance does not mean you give equal weight and equal time to every single aspect of your life. But Whenever you decide to engage in one activity, you give it your all, no matter what. It takes some thought beforehand. You have to organize your time. I think the biggest thing is just establishing what are your priorities and uh, in doing those things. So I, I mean, there's rarely time where I'm sitting at home doing nothing. Um, I think you have to understand that things ebb and flow. That there are times in medical school where things are lighter and times when things are a lot heavier. And so I think learning how to balance your time and prioritize is a skill that, again, it just takes practice. But once you learn how to do it, you realize you have a lot more time available in medical school than you thought you did. One of the main things I tell these students is to start by planning. Plan by year, and then plan by semester, plan by month, plan by week, and then plan by day. And obviously it takes a lot more time to plan for a year. It takes less time to plan for a month, less time to plan for a week, and then your daily planning can be pretty short. And so um, by being intentional with your use of your time, you really can accomplish great things in medical school and still have a personal life and still find happiness. Um, to be efficient in medical school, it really, you gotta find what works for you. Um, personally, I really liked the Pomodoro timers. So like 25 minutes of intense work, uh, whether that's doing your Anki cards or studying for medicine or a research project. And then when that timer goes up, you give yourself five minutes to do whatever. And then that when that five minute breaks up, go right back into another 25 minutes of just, uh, you know, dedicated focused study time or work time. And for me, that's how I had to get through it. I always try to simplify it down to, you know, you gotta learn the material from somewhere. You gotta decide how you're gonna do that. Then you don't ever wanna forget what you're learning. Uh, and, then, and then you gotta apply that, um, both for tests, but also for like real life and, and taking care of patients. And so from the learning perspective, I tell people if you love reading a textbook, like find a good simple textbook, that's what you wanna do. If, you, if you're like me and you'd rather just watch a video, that's a great place to do that. But choose what you wanna do. Uh, and then remember that information with flashcards. I, I, I mean, we all know active recalls, based repetition, those things are really great. I think that's why Anki fits in so well, is it works really well, there's already good flashcards cards for med school. Um, so obviously I'm encouraging people to use Anki uh, and then and then you got to apply it and I think a lot of people kind of skip that last step but you have to do practice questions you have to go see a lot of patients that's the only way you're going to actually apply all the things you've learned and connect the dots between you know you have to get the big picture you got to memorize all the little details but you also got to get the big picture and um, I tell people if you do those few things and, and try not to resource overload and choose 10 resources, but if you find a couple of good resources you like, you, that's the key to success. Clarify all of the resources. What are they? What are you going to need? And what would I start with? Um, because it can be really overwhelming. Um, and I always tell people you could basically get through medical school if you just used Amboss and Anki and kind of married those two together. There's obviously others that are helpful, but that's one thing um, that I would say. Another thing is to realize that um, you're not going to be perfect at everything. And I would have told myself to not be scared of making mistakes. I remember originally being very hesitant to make a decision. This idea that we perpetuate in medicine that we can't ever be wrong. And I think it's very self-perpetuating. We've all... Most of us who end up in medicine have been high performing people our entire lives and we're not used to being wrong. It doesn't ha it didn't happen very often. 
and becoming comfortable with that and becoming comfortable saying, I'm gonna say this is my answer, even I might be wrong, takes time. But I learned, I experienced and learned that the more I did that, I learned better, my colleagues respected me more, my attendings and my residents that I worked with respected me more and valued my contributions more. I think the advice that I'd give myself is to realize that the stress of medical school can be helpful to a point, but beyond a certain point, um, there's no there's no reason to stress. And I think I would tell myself to connect with mentors even earlier in medical school. And um, the other thing is, if you change your attitude about everything that you're experiencing, um, you can live a more positive life. And at the beginning, I pretty much hated research. And then I convinced myself that I loved it, and I still do love it. And at this point, I'm not faking it. I actually do love it, but it took a lot of fake it till you make it. Um, and that goes with, I would say, anything in life, especially medical school. You might not love your surgery rotation, but fake it. Act like you love it, and your attitudes will change afterwards. Enjoy the journey. Like, medical school's been so much fun. Um, lean into opportunities. As things come up, like, invest. Give it a try. You're not committing to doing something for the rest of your life. Um, and I would say, the sooner you find a way to, the, to work that works for you, as soon as you find your way to study, the better off you're gonna be. Um, and that's gonna be different for everyone. I think there are a few things that like apply, uh, like spaced repetition, Anki, that idea of spaced repetition. The, the education literature is really, really good on spaced repetition. And so like that, that's gonna be something you need and you need some way to evaluate yourself and to and that's, we use question banks in medicine to do that. And boss, I thought was the best one, but that, that was my feeling. And I think so there are those few core principles that you need to hit, but whatever way works for you to do that, the sooner you figure that out, the better off you are. I would have told myself like, yeah, you need to do well on the test, but also I think the real key, and it's hard to remember sometimes in med school, but it's, it's taking care of the patients and making sure that they're the best taken care of. And, um, and that's new. You know, I just recently started using the physician uh, part of AMBOSS and, and it's awesome. And you know, that's really helpful.